Okay, let's get started. Uh, pressing the T hotkey brings up the turn sequencer. As you can see at the top, it lists the current round or game turn, then the names of the tokens, their status, and an area for notes that you might want to keep track of. Now I'm going to set the status on a few units so you can see how it works. Uh, see the color chips uh, appearing in the status column of the turn sequencer. And I'll just do one more. Set that to orange. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Now these gray buttons are used to manage your settings for the turn sequencer. I want to click on configure and that brings up the setup wizard and I'm going to make some settings for a D&D 4th edition. And it's just a matter of answering the, the various questions in the wizard and it's, it's pretty straightforward. This determines uh, whether the status column will appear or not. I'll stay with the default of yes. And we'll continue on to the next screen. Here you decide what data you want to track for each of the units. So let's start off with initiative. That's the most important thing for a turn sequencer. And I'll put in a default value of 10 just to show that you can have a default if you want to. Uh, if you want, uh, you can break down the names of the values into two separate lines to keep the column width uh, shorter. So here we're going to add init bonus, armor class, current hit points, and max hit points, and here I'm going to set the option that the players, uh, only the GM can alter that value. I don't want the players changing their hit points. And I guess the last thing we need is the dexterity bonus, uh, which is going to be used to break ties in case two people roll the, sa the same initiative. So this will decide whoever has the highest bonus gets to act first in those cases. Now on this next screen, uh, you can control how the columns appear, how wide and what order the columns are in. And simply drag the right edge of each column to adjust the width. And that's how wide they'll be on the turn sequencer. And you want to make them as, as narrow as possible so you can squeeze in as much information as you can without having to scroll the turn sequencer. Like so. When you're done with that, if you want, you can drag on the green handles to rearrange the layout to, to determine what comes first, what comes second. Uh, there's a bug in the current release that uh, this order rearrangement doesn't stick, but I'll fix that in the next release. On this screen, you need to decide how the sequencing works. So we'll stick with initiative for primary sequencing, and then in the case of ties, we'll use the dex bonus to resolve who goes first. And we'll stick with the defaults for this, and we're almost done. Now we just need to name um, name our settings. We'll call this D&D 4E, and let's add portrait to this because we've we want to distinguish this from other sets that I'm going to make later. And you click on the finish button and our settings are applied to the turn sequencer. Let's make this a bit bigger so you can see. There we go. So you can see for each unit it lists the token name, the portrait, the status, the initiative with the default value of 10, but the rest of the data is still blank. We need to enter that in at some point. Now let's say I'm not quite happy with this and I want to make some changes. Just click on configure and let's um, let's set it to show instead of the portrait, let's uh, show the token. And we'll keep the default sizes. And this time we'll hide the health status. 
Now on the right side, there's a table that lists all the values being tracked. Let's say we want to get rid of initiative bonus. Just click on delete. And we won't be changing anything here. On this screen, uh, we'll stick with the same settings also. And now we're going to do a save as by calling this token. So we apply our settings and that looks pretty good with the tokens showing instead of the portraits. Let's scroll around. Okay, now let's make this window uh, turn sequencer a little bigger so we can see all the data. I'm running this demo at low resolution so it's it's looking pretty cramped, but uh, at higher resolutions you should have plenty of room. Now let's enter some data for our PCs. If you single click on a row, it selects it, but if you double click it, it goes into edit mode where you can and just type in uh, whatever text you want in the fields. You can use the tab key to jump from one field to the next or shift tab will take you backwards one field. So I'll just fill in uh, all these values, the current hit points, max hit points. For now they're the same since he's not injured. When you're done entering data for a row, just click on another row and you'll be out of edit mode. And double click a row to enter edit mode. Okay, I've now finished entering in data for all my units and as you can see it's sorting them automatically by order of initiative. The highest initiative goes first and in the case of a tie, this, there's two units with initiative of 13, you'll see it sorts them by dexterity bonus because that's what we told it to do when we configured the settings. Okay, now let's take a look at how the turn sequencing itself works. The next unit to act is always the topmost on the list and that's shown by the blue halo. If I step the sequence, you'll see that on is now going to act next round and it's now Marta's turn as indicated by the blue halo. Keep stepping the sequence, the next character is outlined, and when you get to the end of the round, there's a little bookkeeping phase just before the round ends, and then you step it once more, and it's now round two. A couple of handy shortcuts you should know about is if you click on the round or turn indicator, it becomes editable, and you can type in a new round number click it again and it becomes uneditable and you'll see as we step through the sequence as soon as the round ends it's now round seven. The other shortcut is clicking on the round turn label will reset it to round one. Here's another layout I prepared using the configure button. This time I specified to not use any artwork which keeps the, the layout nice and small and know, compact so it doesn't take up a lot of screen space. Not so much scrolling around. Now to switch settings that you've prepared, it's very easy. Just click on the load settings button, double click your settings that you want, and it loads them. Pretty easy. Now, by default, units on the map don't appear in the turn sequencer until you explicitly tell Battlegrounds that you want them in there. So, to do so, just bring up the contextual pop-up menu and select Include in Turn Sequence. That will list them um, with a default gray background because they're neutral. But if we want to change their disposition to the party and make them hostile, that gives them a red background. Actually, you can't see it right now. Let's make this bigger. There we go. And we'll add the other guard to the turn sequencer. Like so. See, he's gray, so we want to make him hostile. And there we go. 
Now we just need to fill in their data and we're ready for combat. So to recap, the uh, turn sequencer auto sorts combatants based on, in this case, initiative, and any ties are resolved based on dex bonus or whatever other value you specify. And in the case of a further tie, it's randomly chosen who's next. Just so you know, all the data that you've typed in gets saved along with the encounter, or if you want to save a deployment file, it can be saved there as well. Well, that about does it for this tutorial. The only other thing I'd like to mention is that the turn sequencer can be configured to support game systems that have uh, turn phases or impulses or segments or ticks, whatever you want to call them. Uh, that's where the turn is further broken down into discrete segments. And you can just explore that on your own and it's really easy to figure out.